throughout this past year, we have all known people who have been affected by this terrible coronavirus. We have watched in horror as the pandemic has caused sickness, death, mourning, economic hardships, educational reversals, and so much other suffering in people even around us. We pray fervently for those who are sick and particularly for those who grieve the loss of loved ones. One distress that many of us have experienced in one way or another throughout this pandemic is isolation. The virus has pushed us to stay apart, keeping your distance from another, since another person may be a threat to our health. It's been so heart-wrenching to watch as grandparents avoided getting close to their grandchildren and hugging them and kissing them. Elderly living in assisted living centers or nursing homes had to visit with guests outside windows or glass doors. Family and friends avoided visiting one another. Celebrations such as weddings, baptisms, funerals were all restricted and how many people could attend. As you well know, our religious services and even mass were reduced to smaller groups of the faithful, wearing masks, sitting apart six feet. It's been a lonely time for some people, a strange, puzzling and unnerving time for most. We priests, as you well know, celebrated mass for limited numbers of people. The priests and deacons sanitized our hands to distribute Holy Communion and, of course, wore Mass. Greeting people before and after Mass and the exchanging of the sign of peace was eliminated. And now we come to Holy Week in the Sacred Triduum. We pause and we remember that Jesus will die in isolation, hanging on a cross, mocked, shamed, and all alone. We know that Jesus even felt separated from his Father in heaven. He cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? One theologian writes, in that moment, Jesus embraced more than just our deaths. Jesus made his own the loneliness that we all endure sometimes, and that of tens of millions living today. My brothers and sisters in Christ, it is from this awful moment and the events of these sacred days that Jesus gives us the sacrament of hope, the Eucharist, so that he could stay with us always. This is my body and blood given for you. He also this evening instituted the holy priesthood so the Eucharistic sacrifice would be perpetuated until his return in glory at the end of time. I ask you to please pray for our priest of Metuchen. Especially this year, I ask you to remember our dear Monsignor Zamorski, who has so faithfully served this community and our diocese for so many years as he approaches retirement. In addition, pray for our seminarians and for more men to respond to God's call to follow him for service of our local church. The Eucharist defies isolation. Even if we only watch TV on ma mass on TV, even if we can't physically receive the Eucharist, 
Jesus promised not to leave us orphans, ever. No matter what the present pandemic does, no matter what challenges you and I face in life, Holy Thursday reminds us that we are not alone, ever. We live possessed by our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us so that we could always be with him, now and for eternity. Our hearts are so grateful for this greatest of gifts, the Eucharist, and for the beautiful gift of the priesthood. We thank you, God, for the great love by which you ordained that we could always be comforted, sustained, and strengthened by being with you, present to us in the Eucharist. We thank you, loving God, for the perfect sacrifice of your son, Jesus, so you could stay with us here and now and for eternal life. Yes, my brothers and sisters in Christ, Today reminds us that we're never in complete isolation, no matter how much we try. Today reminds us that God awaits us, and he is with us, always.